Good day. Welcome to Partakers Wednesday worship on the 23rd of November 2011. Come, let's worship this great and awesome God. We start today with the song, Oh for a Thousand Tongues, and it's sung to us by Peter Schroch. Peter was singing about the man, Jesus Christ. But who is and was Jesus Christ? Who is he? Almost everybody has an opinion about him. Countless millions worship him today and down through history. People sometimes ask me, Who is your Jesus? So let me answer that briefly. Who is my Jesus? My Jesus Christ is the man who splits history, B.C. and A.D. The man who we claim is the Messiah and Saviour as spoken about by the prophets of old and written about by those who met him. My Jesus Christ, the man who healed the sick, fought for justice, did many great deeds, filled with compassion, driven on by joy and in constant conversation and communication with God the Father. My Jesus Christ, the man who claimed to be God and was God. Jesus Christ who emptied himself, made himself nothing, so as to take on human form. Jesus Christ, fully human and yet fully God. My Jesus Christ, the most amazing man who ever lived, born of a woman in a humble stable. Jesus Christ, the man born to die, that he may come back alive and give all people a chance to live forever. My Jesus Christ, the man who died on a grubby Roman cross, pierced, battered beyond recognition, bruised and scarred. Jesus Christ, the God-man who died physically. Jesus Christ, buried within and sealed into a cold, empty, tomb. My Jesus Christ, the man who conquered death, came back alive as witnessed by uncountable others. Jesus Christ, who defeated the sting of sin and death, so that humanity may choose to live forever. My Jesus Christ, whose very death and resurrection we celebrate at Easter, who ascended to the right hand of God the Father. This Jesus Christ, who with the Father sent the Holy Spirit to transform people into his own image, all who choose to follow him. My Jesus Christ, who covers his followers in his own robe of righteousness, so that they would be acceptable to God the Father. Jesus Christ, my Jesus, 
coming again soon in glory to judge humanity and claim those for himself, all those who follow him. Jesus Christ, who calls to you, come and follow. Now let's have a piece of poetry. It is I Fell in Love with Jesus. It was written by Megan, and our reader is Jenny. Over to you, Jenny. I fell in love with Jesus as I began to pray. He came to me in a moment when I called on his name. I fell in love with Jesus, and in my heart I heard him say, My daughter, I have loved you before you were ever born. And now I am so happy that you have taken notice of my love for you and how much you are adored. I fell in love with Jesus as I began to praise and worship him as my Saviour and fell on my knees to pray. I fell in love with Jesus with my hands raised to reach up to him for help and was given more than I can say. He has changed my whole heart inside and out and filled the empty spaces with his love. I cried and cried to ask his forgiveness for not realizing it before, of how much he sacrificed to make my life worth living for. He showers me with love like a springtime rain and gives me all I ask him for by the power of his name. He holds me close whenever I'm unsure and tells me that he's there for me and will always stay the same. I fell in love with Jesus and I gave him all of me. He took what I gave and made me into something I could never be without him. I was nothing according to the word, but with him I am loved completely and wonderfully free. If that's my Jesus Christ, then why am I a Christian and identify myself as such? One of his great friends, the Apostle John, wrote in a letter, 1 John 5, verse 9 to 12. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God, that is Jesus, has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar, because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his son Jesus. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God, that is Jesus, does not have eternal life. The reason that I am a Christian is not because I chased God, but rather He chased me. I am a Christian not because of anything I have done, but rather because He first chased me and because He first loved me. The man Jesus Himself said, I came to seek and to save the lost. And I was, I was lost. God was chasing me and following my every path with the urgency of a lover after the beloved, just as described in the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 2 to 14. And if you are a Christian today, it's not because of anything you have done. It's because of the events at Christmas and Easter that you are a Christian. When God entered this world as a human baby and took all the necessary steps so that all people of all time could have the choice whether to be his people or not. In my more smug and proud moments, I used to congratulate myself for being a Christian. How proud I was that I was a Christian and that God was a jolly lucky God that I had decided to follow him. And it was during one of my less self-deluded moments that I examined myself, and I found God pricking my conscience and correcting me. And I read the New Testament. For the Son of Man, that is Jesus, came not to be served, 
but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many others. Mark 10 verse 45 With that in mind, here is a fabulous song. I have decided, referring to one person who has decided to accept Jesus' call to follow him and him alone. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me the world behind me I'm not going back not going back come with me This Jesus, my Jesus, also calls you. If you would not call yourself a Christian today, and this Jesus appeals to you, this Jesus who speaks with authority, and you want to become a Christian, there are three simple steps to follow. Firstly, admit that you have done wrong against God and His ways. Secondly, believe and trust in Jesus. There is no other way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other path to God except through Jesus. Call on Him, receive, trust, obey, and worship Him, recognizing Him for who He is and what He has done. Then lastly, confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Once sin has been confessed, and Jesus is believed in and trusted in as Saviour, then you are a Christian. Now you are ready, as Peter writes in the Bible, to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the family of God. God has chosen you, Jesus has paid for you, 
and he has put his mark within you through the Holy Spirit, just as he has done for me and done for countless others down through the ages and will continue to do so until he comes again. Come unto me Let's now have a short time of silence where you can give to God things that are on your own mind and heart, your own petitions and praises. Let's pray and praise together. Lord, in your infinite mercy, hear these petitions of your children and accept these praises. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Thanks for joining us on Partaker's Wednesday Worship. See you again real soon.